What's going on, everybody? And welcome to TheBeatMajors.net. Um, so, we are back with part two today. Um, part two is going to be um, on stereo enhancement. Um, again, if you're just tuning in, this this is uh, the three three easy steps to mastering your beats. Um, and the last uh, video, which was part one, we talked about headroom. So today um, we're going to talk about, like I said, stereo enhancement. Now, just to kind of recap on the headroom situation, um, again, you know, when your beats, when you're mixing your beats, you want to make sure that you find a good home uh, level. Um, for us, usually it's around six dB. Um, if we push past that, it's no more than three, um, depending on how the track is sounding. So, you know, today, like I said, we're going to talk about the stereo enhancement. And basically stereo enhancement is, you know, just opening up space and moving things out of the middle of the mix. So you're widening them up so that they sound full and they sound um, really open instead of just in the middle of your mix like a mono signal. If you know the difference between mono, mono's in the middle, stereo can be, you know, um, split between your left and your right speaker. Um, stereo doesn't just sit in the middle. So, um, you know, when it comes to mastering your beats and mixing your beats, you want to make sure that certain instruments in your mix are uh, enhanced stereo wise. They're wide because you don't you want to make room for the the frequencies or the, the sounds that sit in the middle, which is like your kick, your bass, um, your percussion, some of your hi hats, uh, your snare. Sometimes, you know, you just want to have room in your mix for all all these different uh, instruments going on because if they're all in the middle, your mix is going to be muddy. When you go to master it, it's going to sound squashed and just, ugh, it's going to sound nasty. So, like I said, we're going to talk about stereo enhancement. So basically the first step, again, make sure you have good headroom already set. Now you see like my, my the kick is sitting a little under six. So again, like I said, you just wanna have that good headroom in your mix first. Now we wanna talk about stereo enhancement. So in this beat, um, everything, there was a sample, we put a piano over it, we put some strings over it, we put brass in there. We kinda have orchestra type instruments. And with those type of instruments, they definitely need to be wide. They need to be full um, so that, you know, they can, uh, take up the outer area of your mix so i'm gonna kind of solo the sample um the sample first and then bring in the other instrument so you can kind of see So, as I said, you know, these sounds are basically all enhanced. Um, we all have stereo enhancement on them. And how to achieve that, um, for the most part, basically, you want to find, you know, most, most of your DAWs have stereo enhancers. So, if you have a stereo enhancer um, in there, use that. Um, how you use it, it's going to depend on that DAW. Um, but they're all pretty much set up the same way. Um, so, first, I'm going to start off with our brass here. So with the brass, it has a little reverb on it. Um, we EQ'd it a little bit um, a couple times. We, let's see, we EQ'd it and then we brought the low end out of it. And we have what's called BX control, which is by Plugin Alliance. Um, so definitely uh, invest in those guys. Great, 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 great plugins. Um, anyways, so with the BX plugin, this is kind of like stereo enhancement for FL um, in a way. But with this one, 
you have a little bit more control over certain things. Um, you can solo certain, you know, you can solo your mids, you can solo, you know, the, uh, the, the left and the right. Um, and I forgot what this button is for. Um, you can, re you can f reverse the phase, you know, you can swap stereo left and right. Um, all of that. So anyways, and then you can turn your meters, um, you know, you can set your meters to, uh, you know, from the in or, you know, to the out or for your input and, in, you know, your output, however you want to do it, or you can just set it to both left and right. Um, but anyways, so for this one, we right here, stereo width, this is where the stereo widening comes in. So you have a mono maker here, so you can mono um, you know, your frequencies, you know, and it's showing you your frequencies here. You can mono, you can make those frequencies mono, but we didn't want our, we didn't want to do that because we, again, these are orchestrated type of sounds. So these specific type of sounds require, um, some type of stereo enhancement. So we just kind of, it's, it's usually set, um, to zero. Um, and we just turn it up to about, mm, we turn it up to 110, I think. And that's pretty much how we got the widened effect on the brass. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle it on and off so you can kind of hear the difference. definitely a very very slight um difference because it's kind of already enhanced but we just kind of wanted to open it up a little bit more to the right side it's uh, a little to the left so we just wanted to kind of open it up a little bit more on the right hands on the right side so that you could hear it a little bit more on the right um so if we go over here to the strings here So with those strings, we added the FL stereo enhancer. I like this for certain for certain things. We don't use it too much anymore, um, but I like it personally for the for for specific things. I still like some of the old legacy uh, FL plugins. They work really well, no matter no matter how many great plugins are out there. FL's plugins are still cool. So, anyways, we we offset the phase a little bit to the left hand side. Um, I'm gonna toggle this on and off so you can kind of hear what our settings actually did. You know, because it's gonna it's gonna change for every beat. It's not always gonna be the same. Now that second time around definitely brought out the stereo enhancement in that instrument. <clears throat> Again, these are string instruments, so you kind of want to make those wide. You don't want those sitting in the middle of the mix. You want them wide. You want them full. Um, that that will help bring the fullness out of that specific sound. Um, then with the piano, we didn't really do too much enhancement on the piano for the simple fact it's a piano. Um, we did slight uh enhancement but not on the piano itself so one thing i want to show you or a trick i want to show you guys is that when you are working with certain sounds and you want certain or specific type of effects on you know a certain sound you have a set of drums but you want those to be compressed a certain way or you want um snares you know to be um compressed or eq'd a certain type of way or you want stereo enhancement on specific instruments but not on all of them what we do is we send them to a bus so we have here we have the brass the harp strings the piano this and not the sample but the piano harp strings brass um and we did the rest of our uh instruments also um and sent those to the to another bus because basically with the with the we made it a music bus is what we call it a music bus and we added stereo enhancement onto the music bus um, 161 percent and then we made the lower frequency 30 and below um, a mono f mono signal that way it it uh, spreads more and then it brings the middle instruments uh, more of the 
the lower frequencies to the middle is instead of being spread out because when you don't have any type of enhancement or any type of mono maker on there certain frequencies are going to be um, spread out still and then certain frequencies are going to be in the middle but not as much the frequencies that should be in the middle um, probably are still going to be spread out a little bit so I'm just going to kind of show you what this does you'll be able to tell over time once you've done this enough so let's see Like I said, that wasn't a, too much of a difference, but what it did was it brought those instruments that we spaced out or that we enhanced, it brought those out more as far as enhancement. And then the lower frequencies, we those are still in the middle. So, you know, the frequencies are supposed to be mono are mono. The frequencies are supposed to be uh, enhanced are now enhanced fully. Um, Another thing is to make sure that, you know, when I said at the beginning, make sure, you know, like your kick, your your bass, you know, your snares, things like that are going to stick, are going to be in the middle of your mix. So one thing to help keeping those sounds in the middle of the mix is by turning your knob to the right here. And what that does is that a lot that that sets that channel um, or that track to a mono signal. So to the left is stereo, um, as you can see up here when I change it or to the right it's merged meaning it's it's a uh, it's merged together meaning that they're mono now so you know you can mono them however much you want to if that even makes any sense but when you turn it to the right that's straight mono um if you turn it to the left that's stereo so this is this these are tricks that you can use when you're mixing your beats to you know make them sound better or to make them come out more to make them more full you know, you want to keep the lower frequency sounds in the middle and to help with that is making the track mono with the stereo, the sounds that need to be stereo enhanced. You can either use this knob and enhance them or you can do what we do and put the, you know, I don't know if you have the plugin Alliance BX control, but if you do great, use that. If not, the stereo enhancer here is a great tool. Um, so hopefully you guys learned a little bit. Um, on stereo enhancement um, this is just another step that you want to take before mastering your beats but like I said you just want to make sure that you know you're sending your sounds to a bus to enhance them or you're enhancing them on that specific track just to kind of give them a little bit more room in your mix and not have them sitting directly in the middle of your mix clashing like I said if they're clashing it's gonna sound sound squished and mushed when you go to master your beat so again I hope you guys got some value out of this one this one is kind of longer than the one before, but just wanted to make sure you guys understand. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Please subscribe, like. Until next time, hope you guys have a good holiday. Peace.